I'm at the Farnborough Air Show and joining me now is Tom Enders, Chief Executive of Airbus Group. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Enders. Let's start with the Airbus A330 Neo. This is a new version of Airbus's popular A330. You've launched it today with new, more fuel-efficient engines and better aerodynamics. Can this aeroplane enable Airbus to break Boeing's dominance in the wide-body market? Well, what this airbag can do is expanding the range that, that Airbus does offer uh, from the 330s over 350s to the 380. I would say after this launch, we have a far stronger portfolio on wide bodies than we've ever had in the past. Later this year, you're launching or hoping to launch the A350, your new competitor with a Dreamliner. How confident are you that once you've got that plane into commercial service, that Airbus and the suppliers can cope with the production ramp over the next four years? Well, we brought one of the planes here, one of the, the test aircraft. You can see it's performing very, very well. And yes, indeed, we want to be able to deliver the first aircraft already by the end of the year to uh, Qatar Airways. And uh, the point you're making is one of the most salient points in developing new aircraft. I mean, this is the, the ramp up. Flying an aircraft, getting certification is not a walk in the park, but getting the industrial ramp up right with all the supply chain uh, behind you. We've been working very hard on that. We've taken lessons from our own past, uh, our recent programs. We've taken lessons from the competitor. And at, at this point, I can say I'm fairly confident that uh, we can uh, we can make it. Okay. Now, in 2012, you had attempted an ambitious merger between Airbus and BAA Systems of the UK. We all know that it didn't happen for political reasons. What else can Airbus do now to try and crack the US defence market, which would have been one of the key rationales behind that attempted merger? Well, before I talk about the US defence market, let's, let's say we have reacted to that. We have uh, decided on a new strategy roughly a year ago. Uh, we have accepted the fact that our defence business is not going to expand big time, that it's kind of flattish or even shrinking. We still own the largest defence business in Europe, deployed in Europe, 12, 12 billion euros. Our point is to make it more profitable. This is what we will achieve through the restructuring and also the combination of the defense and space business. And with respect to the US, our strategy has always been to bring great platforms of ours, uh, winning products to the US. We succeeded big time with the helicopters. We have uh, now delivered more than 300 helicopters to the, to the US uh, Army. We did not succeed in the end with the tanker aircraft, even though even the US Air Force thought we had a better product. And we'll continue on that, bringing great products to the US. And I see that, uh, I think that we have a pipeline of products that should be competitive in the US market also in the future. Okay, now turning to Europe, do you think that European governments and European defense companies can unite around a next generation fighter to succeed Eurofighter, or is it going to all splinter and end up in squabbles? Well, we have different projects right now, haven't we? I mean, the, the Brits and the French are working on an unmanned combat aircraft. Uh, the Germans are still struggling to, to find a partner or two for a, a large, medium altitude, long endurance uh, vehicle. I think the future will most probably be unmanned. Uh, and I'm a little bit skeptical as to a large pan-European program. By the way, we in industry have not made any good experiences with that if it's more than two partners. Uh, I, would, I would hope that particularly the French and the British are serious about pooling their activities here and preserve a meaningful military aircraft industrial base in Europe. But in other words, are the US and Israel going to dominate this market? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's just finally turn to a UK specific issue. You're on David Cameron's Business Advisory Council. Mr. Cameron's promising a referendum on British membership of the European Union in 2017. If there was a vote to leave the EU, where would that leave Airbus? In particular, would it review its presence in the UK where you manufacture the wings for all your passenger jets? Well, this is a highly hypothetical question. I tend to be an optimist as far as this referendum is concerned. I think at the end, uh, Mr. Cameron or the British government uh, at the time will be able to convince uh, the, uh, the population that there is, on balance, much more value of staying inside than, than being, than being uh, outside. If, however, it comes to happen, uh, obviously it will not make life easier for the big multinationals, particularly for us, but I do not see that this in any case would result in us uh, leaving uh, the, uh, the UK. But again, highly hypothetical, I bet the UK 
will stay inside the EU and it should be a reformed EU, it should be a leaner EU, they have a subsidiarity principle and this is what David Cameron has been suggesting and rightly so, are more adhered to than is the case today. Tom Enders, thank you very much. Thank you.